Hi, how's it going? This is Ray is it a Colorwood for YouTube back with another Dark Shadows video for you guys and gals. Doing my continuing my villains <laughs> series as I mess up here. Uh Angelique, you know, you know, in every franchise you'll always hear about a character either right away or you'll hear about a character later, but sometimes you don't necessarily hear about the character at all. And though that is a rare, rare feat these days, and it was somewhat rare back then, you had to have a surprise, right? So, you know, they, me and my buddy Mark Gilman, huge shout out to Mark. I just, again, I just want to thank everybody who supports the channel. You guys are all awesome. Um, just every every single one of you you're all awesome uh, i can't thank you guys enough but I, i'll say this when when they killed dr dave woodard you're sort of wondering okay where are they going now because it's not i mean look i love the what victoria winner says at the beginning i fear something's going to happen to me by the time Dave Woodard's death actually happens, that that is such a distant memory. I mean, you remember it, sure. You, know, you might remember it, or you might not. Um, but, because I know sometimes I forget things, um, so my wife tells me, and I believe her. <laughs> and uh, so... It's not like they're giving hints or dropping this big hint. Oh, we're going back to 1795. The only real premise you might have for that, post Victoria saying what she said, is really Sarah. Maybe Sarah and Barnabas. That, uh, okay, Sarah keeps hanging around. We haven't seen the ghost of Josette since Barnabas came out of the coffin. And maybe that's another reason, too, to sort of suspect 1795. Is there a... What's the biggest one? Probably probably the costume ball. Probably Barnabas's costume of the period. I think that's the biggest hint that something's a common, right? So... Hmm... Episode 361 is a combination of events because it's it's post day border. Julie is in the mausoleum and she hears a woman sobbing. I believe that's Naomi. She hears a wicked woman laughing. That's Angelique. And she's hearing Dave Woodard's ghost. Uh, which either could just be Dave Woodard's ghost or Barnabas messing with her. I be I do believe, I do believe that uh, Julia tells Barnabas about the the laughing. She goes, "I heard, you know." Barnabas, I, I do believe Barnabas gets this weird look on it, gets a look on his face, it's like he knows what that is. So. Again, I could be wrong about that, that, but I do believe Julia told him about it. Now, Carolyn is under is uh, working for Barnabas. She's she's enjoying the hell out of this, by the way. Pointed out by my buddy Patrick McCray. Huge shout out to him. Just again, huge shout out to Gordon Dem Demowski. If I mispronounce your name, buddy, I'm sorry. Just huge shout out to you guys. Uh, huge shout out to Butch, Butch Rosenbaum, um, Penny Dreadful, Christine, Christine Paris, uh, Cara Tillies, if I'm, <laughs> I tend to mispronounce names, so I apologize, oh god, I'm awful, I'm awful, huge shout out to Fred Barnabas, just huge shout out to Don Schmidt, just everybody, huge shout out to At Dark Shadows Twitter, Huge shout out to at Mrs. Johnson. Huge shout out to Wallace McBride. And especially, especially some, some, uh, 
some fellow friends of mine. Huge shout out to Darnell Weeks. Huge shout out to uh, Daniel Culver. Just huge shout out to uh, Ryan Bowers. And a special, special, special shout out to uh, my wife, Jolie. She she supports me up and down. I, I would not be where I am today without her, too. She, she is my rock, and I love her very much. But so I figured I'd give a bunch of shout outs. So you, you guys are all, every one of you, you're all awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. I can't thank you enough. Um, I will say this with with prior to going back to time. The costume here is the hand. But it's the biggest one we get. And it's prior to Jeremiah's death. Or sorry, not Jeremiah's death. Uh, Burt Devlin's death. Sometime after this, Burt Devlin does die. Get or sorry, plane crash. You can debate whether it's that or not. The introduction of Angelique is it a big deal? It's about to become one of the biggest deals in Dark Shadows, if, if not the biggest deal in Dark Shadows history. It's as big a deal. I'll say this. No, no, Angelique is not a good, good person or good guy character. Angelique is, is bigger. You know how there's Batman and Robin and Robin's always playing second fiddle to, Bar uh, to uh, Batman. There ain't none of that shit here. Angelique doesn't play second fiddle to Jack. And shit when Jack's left out. She does not play second fiddle to no one. And I love the character for it. It's really well done. I mean, she is uh, she's every bit the evil you want 1795 to be. And then some. She's Laura Parker is perfect as Angelique. There, there's no other word for it. It's pure acting profession. It really is. I mean, and the Dark Shadows cast, they knew how to act. I mean, there's no, there was no shortage of talent on that show. Not one bit. And I don't think you'll ever see that, that again, where there's just these actors who are so talented and they're not, you know, they don't, they don't phone nothing. They don't phone anything in. They bust their ass. And really, that's the biggest compliment I could give too. I mean, because this is this is what makes Dark Shadow so so great. The writing and the acting was there. And here's this witch who you don't know is a witch right away. She just looks like a nor. She looks. That's the thing. Think about what a witch was prior to Angelique. What was the stereotype? Green skin, right? The first non-green skin witch I saw was Connell Cochran from Halloween 3 season of the witch. Three, three, sorry. <laughs> uh, then Angelique. Well, actually, sorry. The Sanderson sisters, technically. Then the craft. Then, then Angelique. But I found out Angelique came before a lot of them, a lot of the ones I had mentioned after, after the Wicked Witch. And I can see where a lot of them got sort of their, their ownness from. It was probably from the character of Angelique. That a lot of their witchcraft performance is sort of taste. Even, especially the, the original The Craft. Especially in the original The Craft. I haven't seen the remake. Uh, remake. But in the original definitely she just looks like this normal woman so it's like oh you know she she has what you're just my my thought was oh so this is just 
going to be some sort of jealousy angle here that they're going to set up and do do something with, right? But then you're finding out, oh wait, oh wait, she she's she can do spells and such, and she's a witch, and that's what's interesting too. Here's no one for the most part knows she's a witch until she puts Ben under her spell. Ben knows he can't say nothing. And so with that, you have just a series of events happening. Joshua is going to get turned into a cat. Then after, you know, Vic, Victoria, Traska's arrival is crazy. Because that, by the time Trask arrives, Jeremiah Collins is dead. And, you know, Vic, Vicky's being hounded by him. The, the duel the duel between Barnabas and Jeremiah is one of pure pure intensity by Fred and re really man how Anthony George is just he is really underrated as as Jeremiah Collins in my book I think he's probably the one of the most underrated performances of 1795. And really, it's probably going to remain that way because he gets killed off pretty quick. It's not like he's around for a long time before he gets, before they kill off his character. And he dies towards the door, obviously. Joshua, by that time, Joshua's, you know, he's come back. Um, I love the fact when they're talking... There's a moment when the one of the most funniest moments in 1795 was when uh, Ben, who is now working for is sort of under Angelique's control. Oh, actually, he is under Angelique's control. My apologies. It like oh, I'm gonna turn him in. Well, I want to turn him into a jackass. I could take that jackass. Like he's talking about beating him and shit, and even it looks like Ben. What the hell? Like, even Angelique finds this disturbing to a degree. Like, you got some sick fantasies, dude. <laughs> you do. You really do. It's like, I'm sort of with Ben here. Can we just, can you make this happen? I said I would have been asking if I would have been Ben. Like, come on, you can, you can do this in your sleep. Come on, Angelique, come on. Nah, she doesn't do that. She turns him into a cat. And then later, obviously, he gets back out of the cat when he's in Victoria Winter's room, which is really, really strange. Um, do I think that was done on purpose for him to, you know, reappear in Victoria's room? It could be. I more think I chalked that up to convenience. I just think more or less it was supposed to be done in front of Abigail. Because Abigail, look. Say what you want about Angel, nobody, and I mean absolutely fucking nobody, liked Abigail. Uh, there have been people, look, there have been people lining up to push her off of Widow's Hill, okay? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no problem. Want to get rid of Abigail? Yeah, I'll be right back. Um, but, so. Now, again, I do think, though, too, that, you know, again, Vicky is being made to set up look, to look like the witch was, is, was really well done, you know, but, again, you know, it, it's interesting, maybe, I think, I do believe maybe Angelique might have said something, but the, I forget, I'm old, uh, <laughs> oh, God. What I find most interesting, though, too, is prior to the duel, Angelique, Angelique knows Barnabas can't shoot or shit. So like, here's this protected medallion. It's like, woman, <laughs> like, you got him into this. She can't talk about it. Like, this should be the wake-up call of the century to, to, like, Angelique, like, man, this, this is bad. Like, if he, what if he didn't wear the medallion? Could you imagine what would have happened? 
Like, seriously, what if Barnabas would have died before the curse? What, what would Angelique have done? Brought it back, I suppose. That's sort of an interesting question, too. Like, what, what if, uh, what if he had just died, right? What if, what if, uh, Jonathan, or Jonathan Fred's Barnabas Collins would have got killed in the duel? That would have been crazy, right? I do think Angelique would have brought him back. I think she would have found a way for sure. She, I mean, she has powers. She's she uh she loves to play with the dead. Um, I don't mean that in any perverse way. I just <laughs> I feel like yeah, right. <laughs> no. Um, I will say with Angelique, where where her evil really gets displayed is not just the curse. Yes, the curse is evil. But how far she really goes to set up Victoria is really sinister. Um, she, you know, she makes sure to put a spell you know, on Vicky's room. There's, you know, fire of ice. I forget how the exact spell goes. And she's screaming, she's screaming. And so, you know, she runs out in the trask arms. They arrest her. This, this is where things get interesting. I think I, I think I finally figured out what they charged um what they actually may have charged uh oh god what's her name phyllis wickford it wasn't just witchcraft i think i i somewhat kind of figured out what else they charged her with and who defended her um i don't i'm not so sold that it was that it was jeff clark simple for the simple fact is she was actually from where she was from she you know she would have had people who knew her now what do i think they charged her with because keep in mind all of the things that happen she's not she's not arrested she's not taken to jail until barnabas Barnabas's coffin is carried to the mausoleum. So I don't think they're charging her with the murder of Barnabas. But I'm sort of wondering if when Sarah dies, it happens pretty. I'm sort of wondering if it just happens the same night. Like if that changed. And that's what they charge her with was the death of Sarah from the jail cell. Like, oh, she performed a witchcraft, and that's what they got her on. I'm sort of wondering if that's that was what it was. It almost had to be. It could, because I can't see, I can't see Joshua going to the judges and saying, hey, my son's dead. He wanted, remember, he wanted that kept quiet. But Sarah's death, I do think, was was a lot more public, because, again, she died of, the, and of, uh, illness but i do think they ended up blaming uh j just sort of like how some people blamed vicky i do think there were people who blamed phyllis for sure and obviously angelique was behind up well i know born like sarah sees born of this we know this is part of the curse and angelique lays down about if anyone loves you they'll die uh sarah loved loved barnabas very much you know um they were very she brought out a lot of the good in humanity and any in Barnabas really. It just didn't she when when she died it broke his heart. I mean, in every way. I mean he he tried with Josette, but that that ended badly too. I think that's another thing too. The the death of Josette is publicized very much so, right? That, I think that's another thing that she got charged with, the death of Josette. I'm sort of wondering if Josette dies without testifying in the trial, and that's sort of what they get her on, too. There, there's so many things there that I think they get Phil's wick on that they don't, that, because once Victoria admits what she admits, it's over for her. Phyllis Wick doesn't have to admit that. There's just there's other things that went on with Phyllis. That would be an interesting one too to get into with Phyllis Wick. I've I know I've gotten into her before. I think I I need to bring Christina Carroll on for that one for Phyllis Wick. 
they, they'll help me out for sure. They'll set me straight. <laughs> like, like, this is what happened. They're very, very, very good. They're, I'm definitely leaving a link uh, to their channel in the description box. Go tap. Go check out Between the Shadows, a Dark Shadows podcast. Awesome, awesome, awesome Dark Shadows podcast. Very, very well done. Those two do an amazing job. You know, Sarah's death again, it's heartbreaking. This is just all Angelique. I mean, this is just how evil this woman is. And, you know, the, even to show up at Vicky's trial is evil. I'm sure she showed up at Phyllis's too. I'm sure there was that. Now, you know, when she gets back in, in the present day in the 60s, you know it's Angelique. We all know it's Angelique. She's wearing the worst way, one of the worst wigs ever in Dark Shadows history. It's still not as bad as the Maggie Evans wig, but it's pretty bad. <laughs> I'll, my favorite scene out of all of Cassandra is when she's getting ready to t take care of Adam. Like, with the axe. She's got it high up. I'm like, holy shit, Angelique's gonna kill somebody. Holy shit. And I should, should not have been shocked by this at all. But, I mean, an axe, though. An axe. Eh? Angelique's not afraid to get her hands dirty. That, that's always been the case, too. Angelique has never been afraid to get her hands dirty. Even if it is with someone else's blood. Uh, she doesn't do it, by the way. Nicholas stops her. Which I like. <laughs> do, do I feel sorry for Angelique? No. No, I can't feel sorry for somebody who uh, killed a kid. Uh, <laughs> I can't. I can't. I, I can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it. I, I do feel sorry she got sort of dumped by the wayside in Martinique. Um, I sort of... I sort of wonder after... Here's a good one, too. Remember, remember 1897? I, I was talking about the really first time you sort of see Angelique start to get, they try to turn her baby face, is 1897. She's doing everything to help Barnabas on his journey. What's the catch, right? Well, the catch is really, and this is sort of what keeps her sort of heel in a way. She's there. She's there by Diablos' orders. That's why she's really. I mean, don't get me wrong, Angela, uh, Quentin, yeah, Angela, Quentin, and Evan Ham, and Evan Hanley, Quentin Collins, and Evan Hanley summoned her out of hell. But we all, we all know the devil was just waiting for that to happen. He knew them too were going to bring her out of there, and he's just like, "Hey, you take care of this." And you'll be in my good graces. And that's that's why she got to be with uh, Sky Rumson. That's why she got to be with Sky. But yet she's pissed. She's pissed when Sky <laughs> Hell have no fury like an Angelique. Like our Angelique. Man, there is... When I think of bad to the bone, it does not get any, any worse for me when it comes with Angelique. I mean, she was just so cold-blooded. That's the thing, too. When I think about the 1970 parallel time, Angelique, how she wanted to, like, investigate her death and make sure it really was Quentin, that if, it, if that would have been our Angelique and she would have stepped through the parallel time room and she would have been observed and the other Angelique wanting to, like, do this investigation. Like, investigation? Investigate? Girl? Investig no. 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 She, Angelique would have snapped her fingers. Colin Wu would have been on fire. People would have been inside getting, getting, getting set ablaze. It'd have been over. It'd have been so. Over. There'd have been no Cyrus longer. She would have dealt with Cyrus just out of principle. Um, it's, just, it's so crazy because. I mean, that's uh, that's the beautiful part about Parallel Time, too, is you know how Angelique was in our time, but then you see this other Angelique, like, wait, you're, you're really serious about investigating your own murder and not just taking out revenge on everybody? But I think, I think that's the thing, too. 
To point out the biggest difference with Parallel Time, it wasn't just the fact that Quentin and Angelique were married. Quentin and Angelique had a son. And I really think the conscious of Daniel and just being a mother really played on the Parallel Time Angelique. The, our Angelique didn't have that issue. You know, she didn't have a kid. But she had Barnabas. <laughs> She had to babysit Bart. So, oh, what's that vampire husband of mine up to now? Let's go see what he's doing. I haven't made his life enough of a hell. <laughs> oh my God. But again, just amazing. And I think, too, I can't wait to, I'll save 1840 because I'm going to be talking about it with Patrick McRae in September. But I think when I think about a villain, Angelique is just it. Do I consider her her them them sort of baby facing her in 1897 a weak moment? Not when you look right at the Leviathan arc, no. No, because it's still she's still doing the devil's bidding. So really is she is she doing anything good just to do it out of the kindness of her own heart? No, no, there's an agenda there. There's an agenda. The only agenda that didn't happen was 1840, and I'll leave it with that. But I thank you guys again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Huge, just huge shout outs all around. Um, link to Chris, Christine and Kara's channel, Between the Shadows, a Dark Shadows podcast. One of the best podcasts on the internet. No joke. It really is. They they bust their ass doing their videos. Go give them a sub. Seriously. Go give them a sub. Um, huge shout out to Penny Dreadful. Speaking of someone who busts their rear end. <laughs> Go give her a sub too. Link to her channel will be in the description box. Link to where you can get the Dark Shadows Daybook. I'll leave a link to uh, some of uh, uh, Gordon's comic stuff. Um, again, just huge, huge shout outs to everybody. I appreciate just everybody who supports this channel. And I can't thank all of you enough. I really can't. Um, two years here does not feel like it's been two years. When, when I think that's what shocked me. When Petty told me that, I was like, it's been two years? <laughs> I didn't know. Like I don't I don't keep track of certain things. Like who was it? Somebody asked me how many videos do I how many Dark Shadows videos do I have uploaded? I don't know. <laughs> I don't go back and count them. And I just don't. I mean that that's that's too much like work. Um <laughs> that's that's what that is. But again, links to those channels will be in the description box. Go check out Between the Shadows and Dark Shadows Podcast. Go check out Terror at Collinwood. Great, great Dark Shadows channel. It's just huge shout outs to all three of those ladies. They're awesome. Super, super fans like myself. Just sh shout outs to everybody. Shout out to Patrick. He's a super Dark Shadows fan. Patrick is so, he's such a cool dude. He really is. Um, really, really cool guy. I, I mean, Awesome, man. If you're listening to this, thank you, Patrick. You were super, super kind, man. I can't thank you enough, man. You're awesome, dude. You, Butch, Gordon, you guys are all awesome. Um, again, just thank you to everybody. I know I'm going on here, so I apologize. But, um, again, just Angelique was just an evil, evil character. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a, have a great night.